There are some archaeological discoveries that support our understanding of history, but there are also some that challenge it. The challenging ones always make for more interesting stories. They are finds that don't fit, and artifacts that don't acquiesce to the established narrative. Let's check some of them out in this video. One of the most contentious archaeological discoveries of all time is this small stone covered in hieroglyphics. It looks like an authentic piece of ancient Egyptian sculpture, and yet it was allegedly found in 1908 in Coachan Valley, Vancouver Island, Canada. The story gets stranger than that. According to newspaper articles from the time, the stone landed in the garden of a Mr. Angus McKinnon late one evening and nearly struck his 14-year-old son, Willie. When he ran outside to investigate what had suddenly crashed into his property, he found the stone still burning hot, and he concluded that it could only have come from outer space. When his local newspaper ran a story on the unlikely find on September 5th, they did so under the headline, A Message from Mars. It's hugely unlikely that the stone came from Mars, unless the Egyptians managed to quietly achieve space travel without telling anyone about it. And it's just as unlikely that it came from anywhere else in space. Mr. McKinnon was apparently a man of good character with no track record of making things up, but we're at a total loss to explain what else might have happened here. Our ancient ancestors were very fond of carving things into the stones and rocks around them, but it's not always easy to tell what they meant by their carvings. As an example, here's a set of sandstone carvings from Nescliffe Hill, close to Shrewsbury in England. They were discovered in the summer of 2022 and are still in the process of being studied. The most significant of the carvings is an arrangement of straight lines and circular impressions, which might be a representation of the human form. Nescliffe Hill also contains the remains of an old Iron Age hill fort, which went on to be used by the Romans. But the team studying these carvings believe that they predate the hill fort. There are similarities between the shapes and images here and the shapes and images carved elsewhere in the region by its Bronze Age occupants. But the similarities aren't strong enough to say that they were made by the same people. Those people were known as the Cornovi, a Celtic word which translates as the horned ones. Is that why these figures appear to have horns? There appears to have been an unknown civilization living in the forest of Fontainebleau in France many years ago, and they might have known far more than they ought to have known about animals. The whole forest is full of archaeological curiosities, including three-fingered humanoids painted onto cave walls and undecipherable carvings made in areas of the cave that ought to have been too narrow for humans to stand in. What's really weird, though, is the collection of carved rocks and boulders in the forest. Some depict human faces, which is fair enough, but others clearly depict exotic animals, including elephants. Elephants have never been native to France, and there certainly shouldn't have been any in the country 1,000 years ago when the rocks were carved. How did the people who carved these rocks know what an elephant looked like? In fact, how did they even cut the stones? Perhaps we'd know if we could translate the written language that accompanies so many of their cave carvings. Unfortunately, we can't, and it's possible we'll never be able to. There are people who have been lost to time. The Terracotta Army is one of the most famous Chinese archaeological discoveries of all time. The army stands guard over the tomb of Qin Shi Huang, the first Chinese emperor. His tomb is an enormous and dangerous place, and his body is yet to be found. It contains several booby traps, and some sources suggest that his remains might be protected by a moat of liquid mercury. It's no wonder that archaeologists are a little afraid of exploring the site. As well protected and preserved as the Terracotta Army is, it looks very different now than it did when it was first discovered in 1974. Back then, the soldiers were far more colorful. The burial site was so perfectly preserved that the air hadn't touched the sculptures for over 2,200 years. When it eventually did, the colors faded and the paint crumbled almost immediately despite the best efforts of experts to preserve them. Now, the colors can only be seen in pictures taken at the time they were found. 
The possibility of repainting the sculptures and restoring the colors has been discussed many times, but archaeologists are reluctant to interfere with the statues any more than they've already been interfered with. Perhaps it's best to enjoy the photos and leave the ancient statues alone. We're back to the topic of rock carvings again now, but we're staying in China. These particular carvings can be found in Dugate Cave, Habahe County, which is in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Around 900 separate paintings have been found in the cave, distributed across 20 areas. Chinese experts believe the works of art to be around 10,000 years old. They're petroglyphs, and most of them are records of everyday life in the region as it was to the people who created the paintings. They include depictions of ritual activities, hunting, and dancing. However, the single strangest painting in the cave is something that looks almost exactly like a plane. To make matters even stranger, the plane is surrounded by other paintings that look like rockets. It goes without saying that the people who lived in this part of China 10,000 years ago had never seen a plane. So how is this possible? Is it just a case of our modern eyes seeing an image that we don't understand and translating it into something which we recognize? There are plenty of ancient wonders to be found in Spain. As an example, here's Monteo de Tiermes. This is all that's left of what was once a glorious Celtiberian city, complete with a Roman-style aqueduct and buildings carved directly out of single pieces of rock. Back in the Iron Age, this hill fort was a critical line of defense against invading Roman forces. It took the Romans until the 2nd century BCE to seize it, but they eventually did, kicking out the Numantia tribe and imposing their own architectural style on the place. By 70 BCE, it featured not only an aqueduct, but a pair of forums and large public buildings. The Romans made use of the rock caves but decorated them with Roman-style entrances to make them feel more like home. They eventually built a defensive wall around the city, which helped it to remain populated and in use for a further 400 years until the Roman Empire's influence declined in the west of Europe. The presence of a few Visigoth and Muslim artifacts at the site suggests that other civilizations briefly moved in after that, but it's been abandoned for centuries now. When is a castle not a castle? When it's also a cave. That's a description that can be applied to Kropfenstein Cave Castle in the Waltensburg municipality of Switzerland. The ruined hill fort isn't exactly a new discovery, as it's been plainly visible on the side of a rock face for hundreds of years, but it's been the subject of fresh archaeological investigations in recent times. Although it's called a castle, Kropfenstein is really more of a hill fort, and a ruined one at that. The story of who built the castle and when has been lost to time, but the recent survey included an attempt to perform dendrochronological tests on some of its surviving timbers. Those tests suggest that the fort was created somewhere around 1312. That would make it one of the earliest cave castles in all of Switzerland, a country in which several were built during the 14th and 15th centuries. The purpose of the castle is uncertain, but the best guess of archaeologists is that it was used as a defensive residence for a single family, perhaps a family that ruled the surrounding area. The warrior of Capistrano is thought to be one of the earliest relics of ancient Italian art. The enormous stone soldier was found by accident during construction works close to the town of Capistrano in 1934. Nobody knows who made him, but he might be the work of a pre-Italian civilization that once lived in or around Abruzzo. That civilization might have been the Piceni. If so, the statue is likely to be around 2,600 years old. There are still a few barely visible traces of paint clinging to the marble surface of the statue, suggesting that it was once decorated. Historians have interpreted the piece as a funerary sculpture and think that it might represent an individual attending their own funeral. There's some debate about the correct translation of the inscription at the foot of the figure, but we think it says, a beautiful image made by Annas, the sculptor for King Nevio Pompuledio. 
If so, it's the earliest known dedication to an artist in human history. The Warrior of Capistrano is now the star exhibit in the National Archaeology Museum of Abruzzo. The Ljubljana Marsh's wheel is the oldest surviving wooden wheel in the world. That's not to say that it was the first wooden wheel ever invented. That would be ridiculous. But it is fantastically old. The artifact was found in the Ljubljana Marshes in Slovenia in 2002. Radiocarbon dating tests carried out in Vienna determined the wheel to be around 7,150 years old. Unsurprisingly, the marsh that the wheel was found in is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The wheel wasn't actually the first historical artifact of significance to be found in the marsh. That honor goes to pieces of old pile dwellings that were recovered in the late 19th century. It's thought that the region has been settled by humans for at least 9,000 years. It's likely that the wheel was one of two in a prehistoric two-wheel pushcart, an idea supported by the fact that it was found with its axle. The axle is made of oak, while the wheel is made of ashwood. Similar designs have been seen on old wheels recovered from sites in Switzerland and Germany, although those wheels are nowhere near as old. Indeed, this is the first direct evidence that the development of the wheel might have happened in Europe and Mesopotamia simultaneously. A skull was unearthed in the Judean desert in January 2022. There's nothing unusual about that kind of discovery, but there is something unusual about the coating on the skull. It's made of asphalt. Because the skull is almost 9,000 years old, this should be impossible. It has only endured this long because it has spent all those years deep within Nahal Hamar, a desert cave. The asphalt layer did not appear by chance. It was smeared on the back of the head as a thin coating, and then thin threads of asphalt were made and put to the smeared layer to produce a mesh effect. Archaeologists believe the Natufian civilization created the coated skull. However, they are unsure how or why. They believe the Natufians practiced ancestor worship as a way of honoring the dead, as well as exhibiting their social position. Being able to verify that your ancestors were of a certain standing would have been helpful back then, as family affiliation governed practically everything. This design could have indicated the status of the skull's owner. It's an interesting notion, but without more proof, it's just conjecture. Next, we go to the Hagia Sophia Grand Mosque of Istanbul, Turkey, where several strange pieces of parchment were found behind a marble block in November 2021. There are five pieces of parchment in total, all of which are covered in a runic script accompanied by drawings. The runes make the parchment look ancient, but authorities believe that the pieces were left there quite recently. As evidence of that, there are photographs included with the drawings. As a second point, the parchment was found wrapped in a plastic bag. However, just because the parchment was placed there recently doesn't mean that the parchment itself isn't several hundred years old. No translation for the messages has yet been made public, and the meaning of the photographs is unknown. There have been great changes at the Grand Mosque recently, which had served as a museum for many years before being converted back into a mosque and reopened to worshippers in July 2020. Whether this package was intended to be a time capsule left at the time of the reopening is unknown, but it's strange that more information hasn't been given to the public. Have you ever heard about the flesh-eating tombs of Turkey? If not, this is a wild ride. The sarcophagi in Turkey's ancient city of Asos are all said to possess the same quality. They dissolve the bodies inside them at a faster rate than ought to be possible without artificial intervention. If left undisturbed, it takes an average of between 50 and 200 years for a human body to decompose so completely that there's literally nothing left. Inside a sarcophagus in Asos, it takes fewer than 50 days. The town was first occupied around 3,000 years ago by colonists from Lesbos, even the ancient occupants knew of the seemingly mystical power of the burial caskets. They called them sarcophagos, which is Greek for flesh-eater. 
It's from here that we get the word sarcophagus. If you're waiting for the reason the bodies inside them decomposed so quickly, we're afraid we don't have it. Scientists have speculated that the effect might have been caused by the level of aluminum in the tombs, but they haven't been able to prove that theory. The mystery remains unsolved. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.